Hi, everyone. My name is Hugo Bernier, and I'm a cloud solution architect at Microsoft. As the Microsoft 365 developer ecosystem keeps on evolving, you might find it difficult to keep up with all the environments that you need. Maybe you need to set up a, an environment for web part development, or one for adaptive card extensions for Viva. Or maybe you want to build Teams apps, or you want to build tools to work with the Power Platform. Well, today I'd like to show you a little trick that allows you to embed the environment that you need to actually run a solution within that solution itself. Let's get started. The trick to do this is to use something called Visual Studio Code Remote Development. It allows you to use things like containers, remote machines, or the Windows subsystem for Linux on your environment. And the cool thing about that is you can all use the same operating system regardless of which hardware you use within the organization. And you can separate your development environment from the actual local machine configuration. And obviously it makes it super easy for anyone to get started when they launch a project because if you have the source code, you have the configuration that you need to run the solution as well. All right, so all you need to do to get started here is to download the Remote Development Extension Pack, which is a set of extensions that you add to Visual Studio Code and will give you the ability to do this. Yeah, in my case, I use Docker for desktop, but you could use different methods to actually connect to uh, remote containers. But I've got Docker for desktop installed on my machine, so let me get started by opening a project. Okay, so here I have a SharePoint framework solution that was built a long time ago. And it's actually not even using a version of SharePoint framework that is compatible with my environment. In fact, let me just put these things away here. If I actually use my terminal and I look at the version of Node that's currently installed on my machine, you'll see that I'm currently running Node 12.22. Unfortunately, the version of SharePoint Framework that this was built in only works with Node version 8. Now, if all I was doing was working on SPFX 170 or older versions of SPFX, then I could probably configure my workstation to only have Node 8. But in my particular case, I like to work with multiple solutions uh, across multiple versions of, of SharePoint Framework, or I like to build Teams applications or Viva adaptive card extensions. So that's not going to work for me. But because I have the extension for remote containers and I have Docker desktop installed on my machine, I can actually use this cool feature here. So I have a folder called dev container and the folder contains a dev container json that actually points to the image that i want to use to be able to run this sharepoint framework happens to have docker container images for every single version of the sharepoint framework created so it makes it easy for you to be able to create an environment that's compatible with whatever version of sharepoint framework and that's what you see here I have an image that's created for uh, SPFX 170. So all I need to do, because I have this dev container folder and this dev container JSON created, I can actually just reopen the solution in a container. Now, I didn't switch machines here. I'm actually using the exact same machine that I showed you that had Node 12 installed. But you'll see in a moment when the solution is opened, that I'll actually get a different, completely different terminal prompt, first of all. So this is telling me right away that I'm no longer in Windows. I'm actually running in Linux right now. And if I type node-v, just to show you the difference in my environment, you'll actually see that in this particular remote container, I'm actually using version 8.17.0 of Node. Now, this is not just for SPFX web part. I could, I could do that, again, for any kind of solution. And it's not just limited to Microsoft 365 ecosystem. Here's an example. 
So here I have a solution that contains the Power Platform Center of Excellence Toolkit as a command line interface. And in order for me to run this, I need to have a different version of Node. Uh, I need to have all sorts of different requirements that you may or may not have in your environment. But thankfully, the solution has a dev container. That means that I can just reopen the solution again in a container using the extension that's built into Visual Studio Code. And what you'll see very shortly is that the solution will actually open in an environment that is optimally designed to run this without any issues. In fact, if I look at the version of Node that's currently running in this environment, you'll see that I'm running version 17.5.0. But I can actually just get started. So if I type uh, COE-H, for example, to just get the help, I get the help for the Center of Excellence command line interface right away. So you might say, hey, Hugo, I don't know how to set up these containers. Don't worry about it. One of the things that we've started doing for all the samples across the various repositories in the Microsoft 365 community is we've started adding remote container configurations for all the samples, at least all the samples that we can. So for example, here, if I go pick uh, an old web part that I built to embed Power Apps inside of SharePoint, you'll see that there is a dev container folder that's already built into the solution. You also see that in the compatibility, we actually tell you as part of our readme that this solution is remote container compatible. And if you look at how to get started with this sample, we've added some information on how to get started as well as some useful links. So today I showed you how you can use Visual Studio Code remote development tools to actually embed the development dependencies of your solutions within the solutions themselves. It'll make it easy for you to switch back and forth between various development environments, but also it'll make it easy for you to share your code with your team members because they don't have to worry about whether they have the right environment set up or not. The dependencies are built in and described within the remote container itself. I hope that you found this useful and I can't wait to see how you'll use remote development containers with Visual Studio Code. Have a great day.